is Tech Show Podcast, episode number three. And today we have Jose Amaral Jr. with us. Hello, Hi, how's everybody doing? Hello. How are you guys? Hey, how's Yay. it going, Jose? Just here, another week, enjoying life. All right, all right. Also, we have Angela here, Angela Jude. Hello. How's it As going? Always. So, uh, to this week we have a lot of things to talk about. Yeah. By the way, I'm Joey. If you can't tell by the by the logo down here, or by our lower third. So, uh, so <laughs> let's see what we have going on. Uh, this week yeah. we have we have a lot um, of stuff. Yeah. The, our first topic is Apple dumping Google for their own Google Maps or their own maps, not Google Maps. I'm just so used to saying Google Maps. Yeah. But um, yeah, they're they're looking at using their own map software in iOS 6. Yeah, they bought a lot of other companies, I think, a couple of years ago in hopes of uh, getting rid of uh, their relationship with uh, Google Maps because I don't know why. I don't know how I feel about that. I'm a big... That's one of the reasons why I, that I like Android more than, you know, the iPhone because they have the Google Maps and Google Navigation all built in. And I rely a lot on maps. Like when I go travel and stuff, yeah. especially when we go to San Francisco, it has a bus schedule, it has a walking route. Like it's so, yeah. it handles everything really, really well. So for them to get rid of that, uh, I don't know. I don't like that. Yeah. I'm not familiar with the navigation on iPhones, but from what I hear, uh, maybe you can correct me, Angela. There's no turn by turn on yeah. the maps. No that's, turn by that's turn. That's what I really like. Yeah. I have oh. to as soon as I hit the street of the next uh, the next direction, like it'll say, okay, turn left. Then I have to press the next arrow, and then it moves like whatever, ten miles forward, and it doesn't like pace you before you get there. It's not turn by turn. Oh, I see. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, that can that can suck a little bit. Yeah, they're trying to say that um, it's going to be an improvement because they there's this one company that they purchased. I think it's called C3 Technologies. That's really big in the 3D, yeah. uh, you know, what is it called? The 3D technology. And um, the videos are kind of crazy. Um, I think they're, what did they say? It's not, they, the photos that they come up with are not actual photos and video footage taken, but something about missile, <laughs> missiles and stuff, like the, the plotting and everything. It's just, I don't know, kind of crazy. They're yeah. trying to tout that as a yeah, big the, thing. Yeah, the description for it sounded pretty intense, not but although I don't, I don't see myself using the 3D technology while I'm driving. You know, I just want right. a flat surface map to know where I'm going. Yeah, it doesn't make sense, right? It's like the yeah. the one that they're um, showing off is the Hoover Dam video, and it's like, uh -huh. well, I'm if I'm driving to the Hoover Dam, I'm not gonna be really looking at it yeah. 3D. <laughs> I just yeah, want I'm gonna be 3D route. in real life. Yeah, I'll be there, and then I'll see it. I, I need to know how to get there first, though. And, and maybe, showing me the route in like this. is not, <laughs> it's not going to give me anything. I, I'm, I'm wondering if uh, it's just because their map software may not be as good, so they have to, you know, Apple, they like to wow people, so maybe they have to yeah. wow you using this 3D stuff that, that may not work. I, I would rather that uh, they just get me to the right place. I mean, right. that's more important to me. Yeah. Than, any type of 3D, although the 3D does look cool, um, and yeah, I, from what I've read, it's supposed to be coming from some sort of, I guess, I don't know if it's a military uh, project that they got this uh, technology from, but it looks cool when, when, when you look at the video, you can go on YouTube and type in C3 maps, and um, you'll see some maps of the Hoover Dam, and they do this thing where they fly by, and it looks really cool because it looks very realistic. You can, um, I guess, you can turn around, and it it looks it looks like photorealistic. So right. Yeah. Cool. I mean, I don't know. <laughs> the maps are. I hate that I don't have turn by turn navigation. That's that's a big thing. I mean, especially living in Los Angeles, you're driving everywhere all the time. Yeah. New places too, and so that's really, really vital to have. And just the fact that I have to look at my phone too often, like while I'm driving, to figure out where I'm going, it's yeah. not not the safest thing, you know. So I know Apple and Google aren't on the best terms because you know Apple and Google are suing everybody, and 
then you have that whole thing yeah. with and the phones, other. with the patent laws, and all that kind of stuff. So, you know, they're, yeah. the contract for Google Maps and Apple has run out, obviously, and so they're going to, going somewhere else for it. They're bringing it in-house. It, it doesn't even say for sure whether they have turn by turn, though. I mean, it's not a yeah, rumor, so I don't, think it's, yeah, I don't think it's going to happen, unfortunately. I think that, you know, this 3D thing got, quote-unquote, leaked, so why wouldn't the turn-by-turn -turn get leaked? Yeah. Because that's a big thing. Right. I don't know. We'll see. I mean, WWDC's in Android. June, so we'll see what they announce. I mean, I heard they're going to announce iOS 6 uh, tangent Whoa. It, uh, to... Um, uh, the Apple stuff is like, uh, what is it? Oh my God, I just had a brain fart. Um, uh oh. <laughs> I forgot. Well, we'll come back to it if I remember. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, wh what's our next story here? Google Chrome adds tab syncing. You know about this one. Yes. Right? Uh, yeah, I tried it out uh, just about two days ago or so. It was announced. Um, if you're familiar with Google Chrome, uh, you can sign in with your Google username. And all of your bookmarks and, and things like that get saved from, let's say, from your laptop to your desktop or whatever computer you happen to sign into on, on Google Chrome. All of your bookmarks will be uh, shown right there at the, same, at the same time. So now they just added a new feature now that if you have a tab open, you know, like whatever, three, four tabs, and you leave it open and you want to go from your laptop to your desktop, you sign in again, and your your the same tabs that you have open on your on your laptop will be displayed on the desktop. I tried it out the yeah. other day here, and it was it was pretty cool. I like that. I like that feature a lot. I mean, yeah. if I have a bunch of stuff, I'm always signed into Chrome. Yeah. And so if I'm at work and then I have all these tabs open, and then I go home and sign in again, and they're all there, that's pretty awesome. Yeah. I mean, I'm not as cool as you guys, and I don't have Chrome for iOS. So. Yeah, so the, the other thing is that if you have a uh, Android 4.0, uh, it'll carry on to your phone as well. It's the same, the, the same tabs and the same bookmarks will be displayed on your phone. Jealous. Yes, I love it. <laughs> well, here's, here's the thing about that. So it sounds, it sounds all good, but the thing to me is, do I really want to um, open the same tabs? Does it give you an option to open the tabs? Because let's say if I'm at work, right? Yeah. I may not want to look at my work stuff when I get home, and vice versa. Oh, that makes sense. Yeah. Good that point. makes sense. You yeah, know, I have certain tabs open on my work computer that that are just work related. Yeah. You know. And I'm so not. the same thing. Even even worse on the phone. You know, I don't think I would want to look at any of the stuff that I'm working on. on I my think phone. it's an option. I think it's an option because it says that you have to go on when you click new tab. It, it shows you your other devices, and you can load them up from there. It's not something that it just, yeah. oh, if I open this tab right now at home, it's opening in my laptop as well. It's, I think it's an option, definitely. Yeah. Well, it seems like I thought they had that option for a while, though. I didn't know that that was a, something that was brand new. I, I remember uh, uh, it did have some syncing capabilities, but I guess is the, you're saying the new feature is that it, it syncs the tabs, open tabs? Mm -hmm. Yeah, the tabs that are open. Currently open. Yeah, because it, it used to sync, or it does still sync bookmarks, apps, extensions, yeah. all that kind of stuff, which uh -huh. is really convenient also. But this is just another thing that they're syncing. I, I think one thing, um, I used to use that, and I stopped, actually, because I use, um, what is it called now, Fox Marks or X Marks is the new name. Okay. So X Marks uh, is an, uh, an add-on that, that works with Firefox and Internet Explorer and Chrome and I think Safari as well, and it allows you to synchronize your bookmarks. And so oh, okay, what was cool. happening is that it was syncing my bookmarks, but Google Chrome was also trying to sync my bookmarks, and next thing you knew, I had like a ton of duplicates. Oh. And oh, so my, wow. my browser started getting real slow, and I didn't know what the reason was until I looked into my bookmarks, and there were... You know, there are thousands of bookmarks there. You have a lot of oh, bookmarks. <laughs> <laughs> well, it yeah, was I have a lot too. So yeah, make sure that if you use that program, make sure to to not use anything else that that uh, might conflict with it. That's a good tip. Yeah. Good idea. Yeah. Anything else on that one? No, that uh, was pretty simple. I haven't it's a cool cool thing, don't you think? Yeah, I haven't got to use it on the phone, so I don't know to what extent or how cool or not it is. So I'll give that a try in the next few days. 
try it out. Let us know. Yeah, for sure. Cool, cool. We have a, another thing here. We have a, Adobe is creating... Uh, um, Actually, I, I think allow. what we're going to Go do is the tip of the week. Oh, oh you want to do tip, tip of the, of the week? week? Oh, yeah, yeah. because that's, that's pretty... I see you highlighting this thing on, on our Google Docs, and it looks pretty crazy. <laughs> so... <laughs> I like that. You so, can see okay, that? That's pretty week. cool. Yeah, I can that's see cool you typing. That you, that's cool that you can see me highlighting it. If yeah. you guys don't know, what we do is we have a shared Google Doc that uh, covers an outline of all the topics that we're going to cover. And so we all have it open at the same time, and we're all sharing it. So we can see what everybody's doing in this same document at the same time. Yeah, I want, once you start typing or moving the cursor, I can see you literally moving the letters yeah, and everything that's Yeah, it looks like there's like a ghost on your screen when somebody's typing yeah. or erasing stuff. It's kind of cool, kind of kind of cool. All right, so, so you you PC users enlighten me here. Uh, All right. tip of the week. Uh, so my tip of the week or I guess our tip of the week Jose, is uh, yeah. to be able to add a shortcut to your Docker home screen. Um, I'm not sure exactly what you meant by that, but I know um, what I was thinking was in Google Chrome, you can actually yeah. um, you can make a shortcut to your favorite web app or website. Uh huh. And so, to me, it comes in handy. Let's say if I want to make a shortcut to to Gmail. Yeah. Gmail is pretty much my main uh, email. Um, how can I say this? I guess it's like my email client. So instead of using Outlook or yeah. Thunderbird or Mail or Outlook Express or Mail app, whatever, uh, I use Gmail. That's that's yep. all I use, you know. So yeah, me too. Um, it, for most people that that do the same thing, I think there are a lot of people that do use Gmail as their main email client. It makes sense to run that as a as a separate application instead of having it open as a new tab. Uh, you you may want to actually have an app, you know, an icon for it on your desktop. And so with yeah. Google Chrome, they make it really easy to do that. Um, Basically, what you do is you click on the wrench on the upper right. You go to Tools, and you click on where it says Create Application Shortcuts. Yeah. I wish I could show you this on the screen, but I'm actually doing this on, on a Mac. So. <laughs> um, but yeah, from there, it gives you an option. It'll say uh, Create Application Shortcuts in the following places. Desktop, Start Menu, and Pin to the Taskbar. So it's pretty cool. What, hap what happens is it also... Uh, it also takes out the top bar wh where it says like back, forward, refresh, and home. Oh, so, so it really it makes like it look like an app. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. It's oh. like its own like little thing. That's kind of neat. I wonder if uh, OS X has something similar to that because that's just like me. I have three Gmail tabs open every day as soon as I get to work, and that's just how I am. <laughs> So if yeah. when, my cr when my Chrome crashes, I mean it's gone, and I have to you know resign yeah. into all of them again. So it'd be kind of cool for it to be independent. Yeah. yeah. Well, there's a problem actually with that is that that Chrome trying to do the same thing on Chrome doesn't work on a Mac. Crazy. It, it doesn't give you that option. <laughs> if you try to go through the exact same steps that I just explained, it won't give you an option to. Uh, to create a, a short I guess I'll have to do some research research and see if there's an alternative so that I can do something similar to that. I'm sure you might be able to get some extension or something like that. Right. Well, I, good luck because I was actually trying to look for something like that. And it was <laughs> Just I get a PC. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I'm going to stick to my tabs then. Gosh. Yeah. <laughs> Well, at least you can pin the tabs. Yeah. Yeah. Frequently. That's true. I don't know if you, does this happen to you guys when you pin the tab. Uh, do you do you have it ever set like have had this happen where like you close Chrome and when you reopen it it opens it like multiple times? Is that just me? Mm, I've never had that. Uh, no, it hasn't. Yeah, I, I, let me try it right now and see what happens. Okay. To so drag the tab to the desktop or what? No, no, it's like when um, you pin you know, the tab. When you, when you pin the tab. Oh, okay. On Google Chrome. Uh -huh. I have about five applications pinned, and what happens is, when I close Chrome, uh, if it actually what happens is when it's uh, when it closes improperly, 
and then you choose to restore the tabs. You know how it gives you that? Oh, option? that oh, has yeah. actually happened to me before. Then I have like eight sets instead of four. Oh. Yeah, that's happened to me before, and I think that's just when Chrome closes improperly, like you said. It's, yeah. It hasn't happened to me when I, you know, I formally quit Chrome, like, the correct way. It doesn't uh -huh. do that, but when it crashes, it's, that happens. Oh, I see. So, let's see. Do you have any, any comments on that before we move on, Jose? Because I know you wanted to. Um, no, I just wanted to get the word out and, and share with people the different options that they can do to improve their their online life, you know. <laughs> and so is that essentially opening it up in your browser? It's just yeah. creating it's just creating a bookmark, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it is just opening up it, it's the same thing as opening up a tab in Chrome. So if you if you open up that let's say like we were saying Gmail, uh, if it's signed into one of your accounts, when you open up Chrome it's also signed into that same account. It's not a separate um, process. Okay. So say if Chrome were to quit, does it take it down with it? Um, you know what? I'm not sure. Um, I'm let's not sure try it. Let's, let's crash Chrome and try it. Because, <laughs> yeah, I, I'm not too sure. So let's see. Adobe Creative Cloud launches. Yes. What is that about? All right. Well, this is sort of an alternative way to get your Adobe Creative Suite. Um, typically, when you want to buy the Adobe Creative Suite, it's a few thousand dollars easily. Yeah. And um, that's been a problem for a lot of people. It's just too much money. You know, a lot of the people aren't able to justify that that cost, and so. This is the first time I think that Adobe is launching in an alternative way to uh, get their programs. And so what we have here now is Creative Cloud. And so what that does is you can pay a monthly fee to have access to all oh. of the Adobe suite, which is kind of cool because it's pretty affordable when you think about it. It's $50, and that gets you the latest and greatest, so CS6. And so that, it gives you what, Illustrator, Dreamweaver, Photoshop, InDesign, Premiere Pro, After Effects, Flash, everything. Wow. Um, the only thing is, like, when you stop paying, you no longer have access to all that stuff. With, with that $49 every month, you also get, like, I think 20 gigs in the cloud, which is not a lot considering if you were working with really large files. And yeah. so... I know Joey and I discussed this yesterday, is uh, what happens if you stop paying? What happens to your cloud storage stuff? I'm sure you'll be yeah. able to access it somehow, but who knows how long they'll keep it on their servers. Um, it's, a, it's a really interesting way that they're uh, a new model that they put out and how you can get access to, uh, to Creative Suite. I mean, there are tons of people out there that pirate it, so I think they're trying to curb that. And, um, yeah. I mean, so you know, then you have to use it online? No, you can down. I think you can download it. To, you, yeah, you can download it and install it onto your computer. So you don't even have to be on, oh, okay. on the internet. Okay. So all right. how, how much would all of those, um, the whole, entire creative suite, how much would that typically cost? Let's see. I think two or three. Twelve hundred. I mean, or? it depends on which package you get because there are a lot of different ones. I remember when yeah. I think it was CS. Four or five that came out, you could get uh, like a web web one, um, more of a design one, and so they all have a few different things in it, and uh, so that that changed the price a bit. Um, I think it's easily a few thousand dollars. Um, that forty nine ninety nine per is. month is only if you get an annual subscription. If you choose to do month to month, it's seventy five dollars, and so that's a little bit more expensive. But an important thing to note is if you don't need CS6, if you only want CS3, CS4, CS5, um, or CS5.5, you only have to pay $30 a month. So if you don't need the latest and greatest, 30 bucks a month, and you can get access to every single program in the Creative Suite, which is a really great deal, I think. I like that. So, so that's, that's uh, $5.99 a year annually, is that right? Yeah, that's what I, ca I calculated for the entire year. It's about 600 bucks. Whoa. Yeah. Hmm. 
<laughs> Half of buying the whole thing. I'm trying to find the creative suite. The one I'm seeing here is twelve ninety nine. Trying to find the creative creative suite on uh, Amazon. Creative. There's there's also the the master collection or something like that. Right, super. Yeah, I think that's actually the the one that's closely related. I think that one's seventeen hundred. Jesus. Yeah, they're okay. So it's always been a bit of a reach for a lot of people. I mean, I remember when we had to buy it for the office, um, and we had to buy every computer a copy, you know, because yeah. everybody needs yeah. their own license. That was a really really big deal. Like that is a good chunk of change for every single computer. I mean, there's yeah, so like seventeen hundred times. Yeah, times Jeez. five adds up. I mean, that's not something that a lot of businesses right now in this economy can handle. So I think this is appropriate for yeah. for the time. So know. it's kind of like that Xbox yeah. play that we were talking about before, where they try to uh, make some kind of uh, subscription. Yeah, subscription it, model. Yeah. Yeah, and it makes sense. I mean, if you break it down, um, let's say it's seventeen hundred dollars typically. Uh, where you'd have to buy it all at once, you'd have to just plop down seventeen hundred bucks for mm -hmm. for each legitimate copy that you wanted. Um, that would take you if at fifty dollars a month, that would take you almost three years to recoup. Yeah. <laughs> you know, to break even, basically. Jesus. Uh, or what? I guess what I'm trying to say is, in order for it to equal about seventeen hundred bucks, it's two point eight three. Uh, Years, and by wow. that time they're already going to be CS seven, CS CS eight. You know <laughs> what I mean? And so these monthly subscriptions, they, well, those all include yeah. um, all the updates and stuff. So if they came out with CS seven, you get it. Oh wow! So that makes sense. That makes sense that you always have the most current version. Um, I mean, I guess we'll have to wait and see if they try to change the pricing. Like, oh, you have the old version, but if you want the newest one, our new monthly yeah. is actually sixty bucks. Right. A month. Yeah. I'm sure yeah. you know you limit them, and that's that's the good side and the bad side to the annual memberships because if you lock in that price for a certain amount of time, then you're you're good for that you know whatever period you paid for. But if you're going month to month and you're on the seventy-five dollar plan, and they're like, oh well, here now. CS7's out, you can get it for $85 a month, yeah. you know, and it's like, God, it is keep going up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I know that uh, from from the people that I, I know that use Adobe Creative Suite, or any type of, if they use Photoshop, if they use Illustrator, I know that they buy it, but they don't necessarily upgrade every single time a new version yeah. comes out. You know, I, I'm sure there are a lot of people out there that are still using CS3. So oh yeah, totally. Yeah, De I, there's people because a lot, a lot of the people that I follow on Twitter, they are designers, graphic designers, and so yeah. they were having a big discussion about this. Some people don't think it's a good idea. Some people do think it's a good idea, and um, some people were saying, "Hey, I'm still on CS3, so this is great wow. for me because cool. you know I pay thirty dollars a month. You know, if they chose to, you know, move to that model, but." I it's not necessary to upgrade every single time something comes out. I think it's a good investment for those kind of people that still have the older versions and mm -hmm. they get a, a nice deal, at, you know, instead of having to buy the seventeen hundred dollar full package. Yeah. And and forty nine bucks is is reasonable, you know. Most everyone can afford that. Yeah. I think. Hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I I use a lot of the Adobe products. You know, I use a. Uh, Sound editing. I do the the video editing with uh, Premiere, uh, and uh, of course Photoshop. I'm always those are like my main three Adobe products that I use. Right. Oh, and Dreamweaver. Um, but you know, if I if I was to get a deal with all the, all of the other ones like After Effects or Illustrator, although I'm not really well, I don't know Illustrator that much. That would be a a, a good package right there too. Yeah, I, like I mean. That. It's it's really good. It's a good way to get those people who are on, who unfortunately might have to, who in the past might have pirated it because they could, just couldn't afford it at the time, but they they needed it for work or whatever or for school or something. I know student discounts. You you get a student discount with this also. I'm not sure exactly how much it is, but oh, you cool. do get I think maybe ten bucks off. I mean it's it's minimal, but it's Whoa. 
it, ten bucks, ten bucks, like you know, less a month, you know, for the monthlies. But <laughs> I mean, it's still, that's it's still a difference. Cool. But I mean, maybe it'll bring those people over who are just like, man, I really want to buy it. I really wish I could have bought it, but you know, I just didn't have the money at the time. And so it might convert those. I don't know how many people fall into that bucket, but you know, it might convert those people. So they'll be getting revenue where they didn't before. So that's good. That's cool. Yeah, that's true. The, most of the people, most of the money that they're going to be making in addition is really going to be for the people who who pirated it yeah, yeah. in the past <laughs> <laughs> and the one thing that i think about is the majority of people that i know that have pirated it they don't use it um a lot you yeah. know no they they pirated? they pirated it photoshop you know and then they used it one time out of like 5 months you know, they yeah. needed it that one time because somebody said they needed Photoshop to do this one particular thing. And, you know, yeah. it's, not a, it's not something that they use for work. It's not something that they use, you know, all the time. So those people, to me, are just kind of like brush-offs. Like, those people were never <laughs> going to pay anyway, so. Yeah. All right. What do we have? What's next? We have Verizon. Verizon. Here's an interesting one. All right. No, no one here is on Verizon, right? No, thank God. Yeah, I'm, I'm on AT and T. I think Jose is also on AT and T. Yeah, Joey's I am. On T Mobile. So this one, I'm sure, has upset quite a few people yeah. if they fell into this. But I know if this was um, AT and T saying the same story, my mom and my brother, they'd be out of luck because they both have unlimited grandfathered plans. Oh man. So what Verizon is doing, if you haven't heard, is that they are going to kill off their grandfathered unlimited data plans for customers that are going to go to the new 4G band. No. And so that kind of sucks, but they did release a new tidbit of information today, and they're saying, hey, you know what? We heard you guys complaining about all this. If you want to keep your unlimited data plan, if you want to stay on that grandfathered plan, you can stay on it now, but you never get a discount on any of your handsets ever. Oh. You have to pay full price for any handset you want to get <laughs> if you want to keep that grandfathered plan. So they give you an option, which is better than not having an option. Yeah. Because yesterday, before that news came out, they said, nope, anyone that gets a new plan, they, that plan's going away. You, you, can't, you can't access it, nothing. But they, they're giving you an option now. <laughs> okay, so how about this? Okay, what, what if... What what if you just get uh, you say okay I agree I'm never gonna upgrade this handset, and you let's say if you have a um you know a phone that you can use as a hotspot yeah you know then uh, I guess you just never upgrade that phone right that's what it is yeah you you just but the thing but is you'll be you'll be stuck on your 3G account, right? yeah the, here's the question that I have um, so Ver Verizon they're having you move up your plan to a 4G plan? Yeah, I, it's one of those things that if you, I think for the majority, if not all, if you have an unlimited data plan, you have a 3G phone is what they're so trying what? to say. Is So that when if, when you want to move to the new 4G, the whole LTE, super fast stuff, uh -huh. they won't honor it. They'll say, no, we have new tiered pricing and you have to pay you know, these price, this pricing if you want to upgrade your handset as well. And so it's just like, you can stay on it, and you know, at the time, 3G. So, what happens to all of the Verizon people that have iPhones? Did they offer an unlimited data when the iPhone came out? I'm not sure. I don't remember. I don't. I don't know. I don't know it but doesn't have a 4G. LTE. Yeah, it definitely doesn't yeah, have LTE, so it doesn't yeah. matter for them really. So they're gonna be stuck with 3G either way. Yeah, I oh. mean, it, you, that's just not capable on the on an yeah. iPhone, unfortunately. Hopefully that changes. Um, yeah, I, it, so AT&T continues to honor their grandfathered plans, and Sprint is the only one now that still advertises those types of plans. So if you're still looking for a unlimited data plan, the only option you have right now, I think, of major carriers is Sprint. Um, I think there are a few smaller carriers that do it, but you obviously won't get as good a signal. I think like Metro PCS, maybe they do, but... Doesn't T-Mobile uh, doesn't have unlimited? No, T-Mobile does not offer unlimited anymore. They they say in their fine print it's um you'll be you'll it's pretty much you'll be throttled after 2 gigs. Oh. 2 or oh. 5 gigs depending on your plan, I believe. So, it's not truly unlimited data. I mean, of course you'll get unlimited who knows at what speed. So, yeah. 
I don't I don't think these uh, I don't I think, think Ryzen was throttling people. Yeah. Uh, well, well that sucks for Verizon people. Yeah. <laughs> Why don't you tell tell the people about Clear, which is what you two uh, are yeah. oh, yes. on right now? I have uh the Clear hotspot. I I can't show it to you because it's we're <laughs> Cause broadcasting we're off of it, it right now. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's this little pebble size hotspot by the company named Clear. Uh, it's a branch from Sprint. So uh, if you have Sprint signal, this hotspot can can get full 4G speed, and it supports up to eight devices connected to it. And all eight devices will be running a full 4G, and uh, it you can take it anywhere. That's all you need to do is make sure that it doesn't run out of battery, and you're good to go. So I hook up to that a whole lot when when I'm on the road or you know any anywhere. You know that's and it's really fast. It's really reliable, and it's never failed. You know, it's it's always on, and we're actually using it right now to transmit this video broadcast. And as yeah. you can see, it's pretty clear and fast. Yeah, both Jose and I are on it right now, and so that's uploading two streams, and I think it looks pretty good. <laughs> yeah. And, and how much how much is that right now, Jose? Um, you have to buy the device. Um, oh. I think it was 120 to buy it. And it's forty-five dollars a month, and it's completely unlimited data. There, there's no data caps. There's no throttling or any of that. It's just full, straight out, unlimited 4G. Oh. Those are really awesome for people that travel a lot, or if, um, say, for instance, they can't get high-speed internet at their house, like through cable, or I, I mean, I don't know too many people that like DSL at the moment. Most people are big fans of the cable or the fiber networks like AT&T U-verse or Verizon Files. But um, yeah, I think that's like a really great alternative. It, it's super in line with all the pricing of all the other big companies. So that's a good idea. Is, did you say if there was there a contract or not? Uh, there's no contract. That's you another just, plus. Here you go. I'm, I'm uh, displaying it on my screen if you can see it. I don't know how clear it is. Uh, but there's, they have a, a Different pricing plans and different um, of the devices. They have some devices for home, some devices for you know for traveling and for on the go. They have like a USB little stick and like a, a home modem. Um, I don't think they sell the, the the one that I have myself anymore. Um, they, should, they should be our sponsor. Bro. Yes, <laughs> I, I have a friend that works there. I'll call him up. Oh, there you go. Say so we use it every week. Yeah, we do, and I mean, it has coverage. It's almost everywhere. There's a, a few spots that it doesn't pick up a uh, good signal, but uh, it's it runs from Sprint network. So if if there's a Sprint signal, and you know, Sprint's everywhere, you know. So, mm -hmm. so well, I was working over there when we went to Universal City Walk. That was really day, cool. Yeah. And I needed to I needed to get onto the internet. My T-Mobile was not getting any signal. Yeah, my phone doesn't so get good signal over there either. AT&T, because it was CityWalk, I guess there are a lot of people yeah. at Universal that were, you know, using the same towers. But you came in with that clear, <laughs> um, you know, that hotspot, and it was working. It was fast. Oh, oh yeah, the three the three of us were on mm -hmm. hooked up to it while we were chilling there, yeah. and it was working. Yeah. Now I'm lagging. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Everybody has to do their due diligence when you guys get a new cell phone plan or a plan like this. Always, always, always go to their website and check the service areas because that is totally your fault if you get a new service <laughs> and you go home and you're like, oh, I'm not even covered very well or I'm not covered at all and my signal sucks. That's your fault. Yeah. You know, well, they have yeah. those maps where you put in your address and you look at if you're covered in that map and if you're not covered then go somewhere else it's simple yeah. <laughs> people, most people do not do that or something what they have like they have like um, like metal walls <laughs> yeah you might not get a signal so another thing is that when you go to get a new phone you can always um you can always try it so almost every carrier they give you about 30 days i believe where you can try it out you know, yeah. see if you like the phone, see if you if the reception yeah. is good in most of the places where you need it to, mm -hmm. to work. And um, if it doesn't, you can always take it back to them and say, hey, this doesn't work where I need it to work. Yep. But you can even save yourself all that hassle if you look at the coverage map. I mean, if it says you're covered and you don't get good signal, that's a different story because 
if yeah. you get locked into a contract. That's one reason why. That's one of the few reasons why you can break one of your contracts without early termination fee if it says you're covered and you don't get good coverage. But that's a whole nother story. <laughs> yeah. Well, it it so far has been good to me, and I I like it. I, yeah. I've done a lot with it, and I've done some really big, uh, full bandwidth. Uh, things with it, and and it still it never gave up. Mm -hmm. Do do either of you have uh, 4G, like full 4G LTE, you know, full speed on any of your cell phones or devices? Well, I have an iPhone, so. Um. <laughs> well, my my uh, my Galaxy it displays the 4G quite often. Um. You know, it depends on the area where I'm at. I don't know if you can see it on the top section. Uh, it keeps blinking an uh, 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 orange little thing with the four, and it says, you know, 4G, 4G, 4G. Yeah. <laughs> Have you ever tested the speed on, like, speedtest.net or anything? Um, like that? Like, I did, but I don't think... Um, I tested it, but I don't think I was at the 4G level at that time, you know. Because I want to see somebody use, a, like, on their cell phone, get, you know, 20 megs and yeah. 20 megs up or whatever they say you can get. Because I know some of the carriers, um, they get what's called uh, 4G, but it's HSPDA plus. Yeah, HSPDA plus. Mobile, that's what it is. You're right. You know, mine. I have the same phone pretty much as as you, Jose. Yeah. And um, when I get 4G, I don't think it's the same as when they say you have 4G LTE. You know, the oh, okay. speeds are different. Yeah. It's totally different. Connection. I'll give it a try. I'll I'll test I'll test it out with the speed test and see what I can do. Cool. Cool. Uh, the iPhone, Angela, is that um, is that true 4G? Do you know? Like, what's the fastest that you've seen it download? At? Well, I don't have 4G. Oh, you don't? No. Yeah, I, from from what I understand, uh, iPhones on are not 4G capable, right? Yeah, I don't think they are. I mean, if they were, they. Didn't. Yeah, I don't. I don't think they are. The 4S. The 4S. Because. The reason I remember that is because from the Samsung commercials that they're like always like throwing rocks at the i i, I store the Mac store, you know they're like, hey, why don't you get a 4G phone? But that's <laughs> that's from the commercials, you know. And I never really read the the description or the details on it. <laughs> they okay. So what they're saying is that 4G. If you have a 4S. It will say 4G in the corner, but it's not true 4G, is yeah. what it is. Yeah. And that they and that when it comes down to it, they really are not 4G capable phones. Oh, because I think they also Apple got in trouble um, because their iPad, uh, the new iPad, is supposed to have 4G, and in certain countries they weren't allowed to say 4G. I think that was Australia. Like, oh. This is Wi-Fi plus cellular. Yeah. Instead of Wi-Fi with 4G. Yeah, Apple gets a little bit tricky there. But they also say, like, oh, the 4 means 4G is fourth generation. Yeah. I thought 4G, I thought the new iPad had 4G LTE. I, I thought know. it did, too. Have you done a, a speed test on it? 4G LTE. Well, we only have the Wi-Fi versions. Yeah. Oh. So... So let me see, 4G LTE. Yeah, it says it does on their website, up to 4G LTE if you get the Verizon one. Oh, cool. I remember well, wait, you, I, you won't get unlimited data with Verizon. Yeah, I, <laughs> I remember, I remember when, I was, yeah. Um, when I was standing in line, I got to talk to uh, Steve Wozniak because, you know, that was one of the main reasons I actually stood in line for the new iPad. And, um, you yeah. know, I asked him, hey, you know, was what is uh what are you most excited about you know uh with this new iPad and I was expecting him to say that he was going to be excited he was excited for the, the Retina display but he says I'm excited for the 4G LTE because it's so fast and you know he can go anywhere and it's just he was really most excited about the speed of the wow. connection on the new iPad. Cool. Uh, I'm wondering. I, I kind of wish I would have gotten that, but. I know, oh, you were debating it while we were, right before we were about to go in. Oh, man. He was, like, asking all the people around us in line who we had, we had all spent the night with because we were all camping. <laughs> we're all best friends at that point. It was just, oh, which one should I get? Which one should I get? And you just figured, okay, whatever 
comes out of my mouth when they ask me is the one that I'm going to get. And, they, <laughs> and then when they said, sir, which one do you like? And then you were just like, uh, Wi-Fi black, uh, 16, <laughs> 16 gigs. Yeah. <laughs> All right. What's, what's our next story here? Or what do we have left for today? Uh, today, the last thing we have are our apps. Favorite apps. Favorite apps of the week or apps we haven't talked about or apps we just like so far. I have an app this week, finally. Woo! I know, I don't often have apps to talk about because I don't download too many new apps because, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, I try to find apps, but not too many of them p appeal to me for some reason. And I'll try yeah. something out for a couple of days and then I just end up deleting it, so. Yeah. I have, I have so many apps on my iPad, and I bet you I do. probably use like 20% of them. That's what I mean. So for me, I only like to have apps that I am going to use for sure. So if yeah. I haven't used an app in a couple of days or a couple of weeks, I'll just delete it. And I figure if I want to use it again, I'll go download it again because yeah. it's so rare. And I like to keep things minimal and Apple yeah. and fancy. <laughs> so I, don't ha I don't like having a lot of folders either, so that's one thing. But my app of this week is PickFrame. And let's see if I can show you guys. Um, so nice. here on my screen is PicFrame. And so what PicFrame does, it just combines a couple photos into a, a cute collage. Not cute, but a good collage so that if you wanted to show multiple photos, um, say you want to upload something to Instagram, but you don't want to fill up everybody's feed with five photos of your dinner or something, you can go open this app and choose one of the layouts that you like. And this is just giving you a taste right here of what layouts they have. You choose a layout. Oh, cool. And then you can just choose multiple areas and then put the photo in there. And it gives you a couple options. It'll let you change the size, the width. Um, I just found out today when I was looking at it, <laughs> exploring more into the app, that they have um, styles, sort of like the Instagram filters, that you, you can apply to each particular photo. So it's not one oh, of those cool. things where, oh, um, if I want to filter, it's going to apply to every single photo. It'll only apply to one of them if you want. So that's pretty neat. Like, I can make that's one cool. of these black and white if I wanted to. I like and, that. Uh, so, yeah, it gives you a lot of options. Really cool. You can get a little bit more creative with it. They have these patterns that you can use for the for the background and stuff for the borders. Or you can choose a, choose a color if you're feeling creative. And um, cool. it's just pretty neat. So it's just one way to show a bunch of photos at one time. And um, a lot of people always ask, oh, how do you do that, you know, when you do an Instagram or if you've uploaded something to Facebook or Tumblr or something like that. And so this is one of the many apps out there. I like this one. It's, it used to be free. It's 99 cents now. Um, or actually, maybe I did pay for it. I'm not sure. It might have been, <laughs> been one of those days where it was free, you know, when they had those free app a day type things, and I might have picked it up. But another one also is um, Diptych that does the same thing and that one <laughs> and both of those are 99 cents you can go play around with those and see which one you like but this one's my <laughs> choice um pretty cool you could do a lot of fun and things uh, with it i'm not sure if android has it it is i just checked it and it's 99 <laughs> cents in the google play market there you go so it is ios and android friendly i know you i know you you apple people are they love it when, when the app is only for iOS. I don't know why. <laughs> like if it's only for iOS, they're like, yeah, uh, it's only for iOS. So like, no, no, iOS. that's not even true. Yeah, that's, why, that's why when um when Instagram came out for Android, all the all the iPhones were like, I'm not gonna use this thing. Yet. Oh, I hated that. I didn't like that. That just shows you. That just shows you the weird mentality of America when. All these people get something that you've been using for what two years, and you're all of a sudden like, "Oh, I'm too cool for this. I don't like this anymore." The, and you're, you're like, "What?" This, the, you like, ain't up on this mentality. Yeah, <laughs> but it's like, you know what? You look at you, we got this cool app, and uh, you ain't up on this because you can't get it. Oh, get a pop of an this. Phone? You have an Android phone. Oh. <laughs> but one thing I have noticed, I'm not complaining. I'm glad Android users got it because then more of my friends are on Instagram now. And yeah. then I can share photos with them because a lot of times I post most of my photos on Instagram and I never share them to Facebook. I might share them to Tumblr, but mostly I just keep it within that little Instagram bubble. So I like that. Yeah. But you know 
Even Instagram has yeah. slowed down so much really? ever since Android users have come on. It's all Ooh. Android users' fault. Damn it. No, My Instagram. I'm just saying that, like, you know, their server load, I'm sure, is like a. Yeah. You know, how many millions of downloads did they get in that first day? So. Yeah. It's understandable, but it's gotten a little bit slow. But I think they're they're working on it because it's not happening as often as it was. But yeah, yeah. I don't know. I mean, my I my Instagram still doesn't work on my my Android. You have ICS though, right? Yeah. I mean, I'm I'm able to to browse through my friends' pictures and like them and all that. But once I click on to take a picture. It all goes haywire, and it's just <laughs> on my phone. So. That's because you're rooted, though. Have yeah. you been able to, instead of taking a photo through the app, have you been able to just bring one in like that you've no. taken somewhere else? I haven't tried it. When you apply it. the filters, it, it gets crazy when you try to apply a filter. Yeah, when I, when I go, oh. get to the section where you put the filters, then I, I just press on the filter, and huh. it goes, yeah, it goes I crazy. I wonder why. It's all crazy. I'm sure you're not the only one with that issue, so I hope they're no, fixing it's, it's, it. I think it's a rooted, uh, a root issue. I don't know. Yeah, I keep we'll waiting see. for for an update that says uh, ICS update for oh, Instagram. Oh yeah, specific. Y I you think know what trips me out about the the thing going back to what we were saying about uh, the Apple people not liking <laughs> uh, the Android users to to have Instagram because they one one of the things I heard is like, oh yeah, you know, all the photos that are on Instagram are all good because they're they're all coming from the iPhone 4S, and you know the the picture quality is so good because the camera is great on these. Well, you know what? Yeah. A lot of people that were using an iPhone, like the first generation iPhone, were able to use Instagram. Yeah. And nobody complained about them and yeah. their pictures. They're yeah. On their yeah. What that? Compared to the the cameras that we have on this. <laughs> Hey, I never said anything bad about Android users getting Instagram. <laughs> I welcomed it, you know. So. I'm not talking about you, Angela. Well, you're looking right at me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so, Jose, what's your uh, app? My app, it's a very simple one. Uh, I think you recommended it to me a while back when, when we first got our, our Samsung Galaxy phones. Um, I thought I was under the impression that it's only for a, a, an app that's built into the Samsung phones, but apparently you can get it at the um, Android market. I'm trying to sh share my screen right here. It's called Kai's Air. I don't know if I'm pronouncing it correctly, but okay. either that's Ka keys, maybe keys. I don't know. Keys, keys or Kai's. Uh, it, it, it is. It is made by Samsung. Yeah. So what it does, um, you know, you can. You can, uh, um, as long as you're on the same wi wireless network on your laptop uh, and on, on your phone, uh, you can uh, reply to a text message from your laptop. So it'll bring up this whole UI with like your text messages, your pictures, you know, all, all the little things on there. Um, just like if you were on your phone, but on your, on your desktop screen, and then you can select uh, to go to, to your calendar or to your, you know, t text messages or uh, picture folder and and browse all the things from your phone on on your screen and re I've used it today to to get used to it because I haven't used it in a long time. So I sent a few text messages through my laptop using that app and it was pretty cool. It just it does more than that though, doesn't it? Doesn't it allow you. To uh, yeah, it does. Uh, doesn't it allow you to show your pictures and your movies and stuff. Yeah, you all your your uh, media files are are accessible through your through your screen as well on your on your desktop. So whatever files you have on there, you know, like my my whole um, photo photo sh photo pictures and all that, they're all accessible on here, and I can see them. I like that. And so it's, and yeah, so like and, uh, music too, Jose. Uh, yes, music. Although I don't have any music on it, I I'm, I use Google Music, so all my I'm music is being all streamed. All for being wireless. Don't have yes. to connect any cables, anything like that. I'm all for stuff like that. The less so, cables, the better. Um, I don't know if you can still see my screen, but I'm I'm showing some of the screenshots. Uh, um, so basically, what it does, once it connects, the phone gives you an IP address. To open up on your browser, you go to that to that uh, IP address. Uh, you have to allow both. You're cutting out a little bit, Jose. Connections from both ends. Okay. 
It looks pretty cool. I like it. That's my my app for the day. And that's that's the one I've been using lately. And just I enjoy it so far. Cool, cool. Thanks for that. Thanks for that. So the yeah. last one is uh, my app. Yes. I want to talk about my app because I like it a lot. And I like it a lot app. too. And what is it? It is called Turntable.fm. Yes. So it's only new to Android users. Um, it's actually been around for a while. They have a website that you can go to. You can go to Turntable.fm. And from Turntable.fm, what happens is that, um, I guess I can show you in a second. Um, well, yeah, you can go to Turntable.fm. Let me try to get this on the screen here. Anyone that's ever had dreams about becoming a DJ, this is your app to download. <laughs> <laughs> DJ Jose. We already have a yeah. DJ here, DJ Jose, but for me, it, <laughs> I was able to be a DJ, and it's so empowering. <laughs> it makes me really nervous to choose a song yeah. that you think you, that you want everybody to enjoy and fit in the genre yeah. of what room you're in, and ooh, it's a little bit nerve-wracking, but once you get the hang of it, it's really, really fun. Yeah, you can just imagine how it feels DJing on stage for, <laughs> for real, real people. people. <laughs> <laughs> just a All little right, taste. So, so here, here it is here. When you go to turntable.fm, you can sign in using Facebook or Twitter. Um, and you can look, and it will show you all the most popular rooms. So here are some of the rooms that I've favorited. Uh, let's go into the Soul Zone. That's Whoa. my favorite room. in here. <laughs> okay, so let's load this up real quick. So what you'll notice is when you get into the room, once it loads, I have it muted, I think. Oh, there we go. So what you'll see is you'll see a bunch of people in the room. These are actual these are these are people and these are their avatars here. And based on the number of points they have, they can change you can change your character around. And you can see what's playing here because it's scrolling through. And I guess right now it's Mariah Carey, right? Um, here's another thing I like is once you hover over this, let's say if I like this song, I can add it to my iTunes. I can buy it on Amazon. I can add it to Last FM. Uh, what is this? Audio. And add it to my Spotify. What is this last one? Whoa. I can add it to my turntable FM. Yeah, so if you wanted to play that song when you started DJing, you could add it to your queue. That's cool. So right now, this person is playing here. It's, uh, let's see, DJ Rev. They have 165 points, and they have eight fans. Now, if I choose to become a fan, let's say if I, I'm in this room and I really like what DJ Rev has been, able, been playing, uh, you know, I can become a fan, and I'll get an email whenever he is um, he's on the turntables. Cool. So you'll see what will happen is this this guy will play his song, and after he's done, the next person will play theirs, then the, and then the next, and then the next. Now you can see here that there's also an empty spot. So I can click on this. I can hit play music if I wanted to, <laughs> and it would play my playlist. Now my playlist right now is a hip-hop playlist, so it probably wouldn't be appropriate to the Soul Zone. I would probably get kicked off. Um, here's another thing that you'll notice is that people, People are chatting in here, right? Oh, okay. Chat here. Yeah, they're commenting on whatever songs are playing and stuff. So sometimes people are like, "Hey, skip that song. That doesn't work." And they give you feedback oh. right away if if it's not appropriate. That was a private chat. Yeah. So here we go. There we go. Where are the lighters? <laughs> you know. <laughs> Another thing is you'll notice this meter here. Okay. And this meter says either lame or awesome. If it if the song gets enough lames, you can actually get kicked off as a DJ. <laughs> right? That sucks. <laughs> um, but if you like what's going on, you like what you hear, you hit awesome. At the end, they usually show a, a readout here of how many lames, how many awesomes you got. <laughs> so you know yeah, what and so the if, right if, if you click right. awesome, that awards a point to that person, whoever's DJing. So that's I don't want to get any lanes. That's how they rack up all those points. So if like 100 people say, oh, that song's awesome, you just got 100 points. Whoa. <laughs> yeah. Um, so 
That's turntable.fm. They have it. The, the new thing, the, re the reason why it's news is just that uh, they just released it for Android recently. It, right now, if you look at this Android uh, store, it only gets three stars, and that's not because turntable.fm isn't a good service, but probably because it's kind of buggy still. On the on yeah. Android, on iPhone, I think it's a little bit more stable. You can get it on your iPhone or iPad, and they've had it out for a while for 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 that platform. Yeah, they have so an iPhone app, but uh, they don't have an iPad specific app, but they do have an iPhone one that you can oh. download on your iPhone if you want. Can you can you go to the website from your iPad and do it without using the app? That's a good question. I've never tried that. No, I think it's Flash-based. But um, oh, okay. what's really cool about the apps is that you can do most, I would say like 95% of the things that you can do on the website, you can do on the app. So cool. I, I, was, I started DJing right away from the app without even ever touching it on the computer in my browser and oh, I was able oh. to add all these songs that I could think of and put it start my queue up and then join the room and became a DJ in probably like five minutes. So <laughs> we should do a cool. DJ battle one day. No, I can't I can't battle a real DJ. <laughs> well you'll you'll be surprised because when I've used that you know that video game, the DJ Hero? Yeah. I suck badly well, that's not, on that. That's not a perfect <laughs> translation as to a real DJ. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, so it, I, I think it's really good for discovery, too. Because what what happens is, you know, you're in the soul zone, and then you hear some songs that maybe you haven't heard before, or mm -hmm. maybe yeah. a song that you haven't heard in a long time, and you're like, wow, I'm so glad to hear this. And you can easily add that to your either your Spotify, or you can add it to your um, your queue. Yeah, cool. I like That's that. That's pretty much it. I think we're done for for this episode. Yeah. Um, we still haven't gotten any calls, so for <laughs> all the people out there, just remember that there's a phone number here for a reason. Yep. And that's because we want you to call and ask your your questions, right? So here you see everybody right here. <laughs> uh, we're, 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 we have we have stuff to talk about, but we're we're here and we're glad to answer any of your questions. We have our I have my yeah. phone here. I'm ready to answer them. So just let us Let's know do if you it. have any questions. Also, if you enjoyed this uh, podcast, make sure to uh, tell your friends. Make sure to give us a like, thumbs up on YouTube, and um, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Yeah, our YouTube yes. username, if you're not watching us on YouTube or on a, the Google Hangout, is uh, eGeniuses TV. And so you can find us there on YouTube and um, YouTube.com forward slash eGeniuses TV. E -geniuses TV. Yeah. Yes. And we're always open from 9 a.m. to <laughs> yeah. 7 p.m. if you want to come in and ask us stuff here. <laughs> yeah. If you're, if you're in Burbank or in the Valley, you know, always come by. Someone's always here. Yeah. If you want to do it old school and see all this <laughs> uh, virtual stuff going online, you can actually walk in to, through those doors right there. And we're <laughs> so yeah, that's it. Um, I enjoyed myself. Always I had fun to have you. Yeah. And um, I guess until next time. Yeah, and stay tuned on the blog egeniuses.com forward slash blog. There'll be a recap of this podcast, and uh, you'll be able to watch it again if you missed it, and uh, if you or if you want to go back and see anything that you might have missed if you caught us a little bit late. And um, we'll be doing a few more posts in depth on to some of the stuff we talked about. So you might find a few more interesting articles if you want to check out our blog. So and that's e-geniuses for e-geniuses.com forward slash blog. And so let us know, you know, give us some feedback. You know, we feed off your energy. So if there's, if there's yes. something that you want to hear, if you like what you hear, if you don't like, you know, something that you hear, if you want to correct us, if you want <laughs> us to review an app, you know, any of those things. Let us know. You can always contact us on our website. We'll respond and um, we'll do our best to accommodate you. Or if you want to give me app hints, you know, apps that are cool that I don't know yeah. about <laughs> because I'm the worst at finding new apps, <laughs> let me know. Alrighty. Until next time, guys. See you Thank next you. week. Okay. Bye. 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 <laughs> Bye. <laughs>